Okay, I'm going to respond to um, a, an older video by uh, Robert PF123, um, <clears throat> in which he spends just a little bit of time talking about some basic dispensational things um, as compared to other views, and I'm the other view. And uh, I just feel like I need to help set the record straight a little bit about what the other view actually is versus what someone like him will say. Um, first of all, I, I agree on a, on a few things, and I'm going to start positive. So I do agree that uh, God has always used different time periods to lay out his revelation. <clears throat> he has dealt with people at different times in different ways, no question. You can call them dispensations, you can call them ages, you can call them eras, whatever. It's, you know, he clearly dealt with people differently in Noah's time than he did when the law was made in Moses' time and different now after Christ. So no problem there at all. I also um, believe that Israel was promised many things by God, and God never, ever, ever reneged on his promises. So just for the record, and, and thirdly, I do not believe that God said, hey, Israel, you you uh, rejected my son and crucified him, so therefore you don't get um, you don't get the kingdom anymore. You don't get the promises. You're out of here. I'm going to I'm going to send all that to the church instead. That is a I'm sure some people believe that, but that's a gross. Oversimplification, straw man argument that, you know, I don't know anybody personally who actually thinks that. Now, I do know some people who think, hey, Israel messed up. And so, you know, God cursed them and stuff like that. But I don't think that's true in a national sense whatsoever. Um, so that, that's for the record. I, I in those areas, I totally agree. Um, I also, though, think that people like Edward have don't really talk to people like me. I mean, it doesn't seem like he ever actually does. It seems like he picks and chooses what he wants to talk about and then yells about it and then castigates people who don't agree and calls them names and picks on them and throws straw men around and doesn't really actually listen to what anyone believes. So I'm going to try to try to get some points across here. And hopefully some, you know, other people who are interested will um, will appreciate this. Good afternoon. Next month, we're going to see a great deal of discussion about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and why he came into the world. Uh, of course, one of the reasons he came into the world was to die for our sins in order for us to be saved by believing on him and his blood atonement. Yeah, and he's talking about Christmas. And I, I'll go a step further, though, with this. And this is something I want to emphasize. I'm, I'm not a dispensationalist, and I would actually say God you know, sent his son Jesus into the world to die for Israel and their sins first. He came, Matthew one twenty one. he came to save his people, Israel, from their sins. Gentiles are then grafted in to that glorious work, that promise that there would be a Messiah. Um, the promise that there would be a Messiah who would, who would save his people from their sins and then lead them into victory and sit on David's throne. That's all a promise made to Israel. Jesus fulfilled all that, and then we Gentiles are grafted into that, and thus we make up the church. Does that make sense? But uh, a major reason that he came into the world was to, uh, to uh, answer the covenant promises of Israel. That won't be discussed in most churches. That aspect is rejected by most churches. They reject the second coming. They reject the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to set up a Davidic kingdom uh, in Israel and rule from Jerusalem. See, and they, he puts it so negatively, like, we reject, we reject. What we reject is um, that he hasn't done it yet. We don't reject that he, he was never, you know, he somehow reneged on that promise or didn't do it ever and won't ever. Absolutely false. What we believe is he did do it. He just didn't do it in the way... Guys like Ed and the early Jews who didn't accept him believe. And, you know, Ed's going to say something later on about how, like, non-dispensationalists are like the Jews. Because we want to, I, I don't even, I, I don't really understand it. 
I, I don't think I'm going to ever see Jesus sitting on a throne in, in Jerusalem on a golden throne. Um, because I believe he already is sitting on David's throne. So he absolutely already fulfilled all that. And I don't expect that he's ever going to do it any differently. So <laughs> I don't see where you get the word reject from. I do reject that he did not do everything Messiah was prophesied to do. If Jesus did not do everything Messiah was prophesied to do, he wasn't Messiah. That's why Jews don't believe in him today. Go ask a Jew or go on YouTube and, and search for do Jews, why do Jews reject Jesus? Do a search on that. And you'll see their answers. It comes right out of their own mouths. Well, he wasn't Messiah. Well, okay, well, why do you reject him as Messiah? Because he didn't do what Messiah was prophesied to do. And then the answer is from Ed would be, right, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you, but he's going to do it someday. Okay, you guys, that's, that's lame. Don't you see that? That's going to be an excuse to a Jew. And they would be right. It is an excuse. He did not fail in anything that Messiah was supposed to already fulfill. And uh, so while many churches, many Christians, uh, professing Christians, uh, will talk about the, uh, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will leave out key portions of it, of uh, the uh, purpose of it. And the Notice the sneaky, underhanded, professing Christians. Yeah, I guess I'm a professing Christian to Ed. I'm not really a Christian. I know what he means, okay? I grew up under this system that he's talking about. 30 years. Very well taught. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you. I heard from very, very, very serious dispensationalists for 30 years. All this stuff. I know exactly the code words. I came out of this cult, if you will. And it is kind of a cult. In the sense that, you know, you're not allowed to question it. And, and when people do question you, you get all scared and you start yelling and you shut your you shut your mind. You know, what guys like Edward need to do is shut your mouth, open your ears. You might learn something or, you know, you might figure out a better way to argue. Just some advice I have, you know. The, uh, the incomplete uh, prophecies, the prophecies that have yet to be completed and will be completed in the future. Isn't that amazing and that people like him can literally say that? God has incomplete prophecies. <laughs> God did not complete things. I mean, just it's just stunning to me. There's not one thing in the Bible up until Jesus came that any of these people can say that God didn't complete. Like he, when he did something, he completed it. It's to say that God has a big eye for incomplete on his report card. I mean, it's just stunning, which <clears throat> would be great to say if you had one explicit passage that actually literally stated that. So if Edward could produce a passage that states in explicit language exactly what he believes, then that would be different. I would be like, well, I don't really understand it, but that's what it says. And But he doesn't. He's constantly telling you and hoping you're not going to read the Bible for yourself that that's what the Bible says explicitly. And it's like, no, it doesn't say any of that explicitly. It's 100% interpretation. In uh, Luke chapter 1, start verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So that Davidic throne was a promise made uh, to the Jews, and that was the answer to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was to be the uh, heir yes. to that, that throne. That is still future. Okay, false. Let me show you why. First of all, he, he didn't finish reading. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Quoting, in fact, all of this is, you know, quoting various places in Isaiah. And um, <clears throat> it's completely false. Don't listen to this guy. <laughs> Who is this guy? What is he talking about? Who is this guy? Yeah, it's this guy. That's what Edward always always says. Um, hey, uh, I just want to point out something here to you guys, okay? <clears throat> Edward is a man just like me. <clears throat> Lives in 2019 America. Edward is not a Jew. Edward is not 
the Apostle Peter. The Apostle Peter is an apostle, first of all. Um, he's a Jew that became a Christian and is thus in the church, which Edward seems to think Israel, Israelis, Israel, Israelites, Jews, are not supposed to really be in the church. I mean, I, I know he's going to say that's a straw man, but like, look, you say Israel has a plan and it's over here. And the church has a plan, and it's over there. And Israel and the church, they don't mix. They're, they got two different tracks going on. And that's essentially kind of saying that God really, his, his main plan for Jews was not to be in the church. It was to be their own plan, which is heresy. The entire plan of God is for Israel to be saved through Christ and become a Christians. And once they become Christians, they're in the church. So, this false dichotomy that these guys create is ridiculous. There is no dichotomy. If a Jew becomes a Christian, he's in the church. He doesn't have any, and you claim he no longer has any of the promises God gave Israel lights. So let me say that again. According to Edward, if you're a Jew in the first century like Peter, you forfeited all of your promises God promised Israel because he became a Christian. That's ridiculous. God doesn't do that. God would not want you to do that. But yet God called thousands of Jews to become Christians and become the early church. So here's Peter, the Apostle Peter, talking. <clears throat> Again, Ed, you know, you're not Peter, you're not an apostle, you're not speaking as, as, as uh, influenced or um, inspired by the Holy Spirit, God, like Peter is. You're not as smart as Peter. <laughs> You're certainly not as smart as Peter was as a Jew. Peter's a Jew. He studied about this stuff a lot more than you and I. And he lived during this time. And then the Holy Spirit told him what to say. So he stands up in, on Pentecost and talks to who? Ye men of Israel. Who, who are the men of Israel, Edward? It's kind of obvious. <clears throat> you know, by the foreknowledge of God, you took Jesus and, and wickedly crucified and slain him. God raised him up. Now, this is very common that God would already foreknow that someone would be wicked and evil, do something, and then he would use it for his plan. Joseph comes to mind. And so, yes, they were wicked, and God held them accountable. But that doesn't mean that wasn't his plan. I also need to, to, to make you guys aware, you know, it wasn't the entire nation that did this to him. It was wicked generation of men. A wicked generation of men did it to him. The apostles didn't do it to him. The disciples didn't do it to him. It's not the entire nation of Israel. It is a group of mostly Israel rejected him. But there was a remnant who accepted him. So this nonsense about, well, the nation of Israel rejected him, is it's not biblical. The branches were broken off that rejected him, leaving behind branches that didn't reject him, the remnant. So it's not the entire nation. you got to stop talking about it in, in this monolithic thing, you know. The entire nation is blind. No, it's not. It's partially. People who didn't accept him in Paul's day were blinded. <clears throat> so here's Peter, a Jew, talking about Jesus. And he says, men and brethren, let me speak freely. Um, about the patriarch David. Now, why is he bringing David up? It's just, you know, what's this got to do with anything? Well, he's going he's gonna to prove Edward wrong here, as much as Edward doesn't want to admit it. I, I'm going to believe the Apostle Peter instead of him. Okay? Is that okay with you, Edward? Because Peter knows more than you. So the patriarch David is buried. He's dead. The sepulcher is right here with us to this day. But David was a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh, that is, the physical seed of David, which Jesus Christ is, he would raise up Messiah to sit on his, that is, David's throne. He, saying this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ. So would you not agree that the, the raise up, he would raise up of Christ was fulfilled by the resurrection? This is another quote from the Old Testament. His soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. That is actually right out of Psalms. David wrote that too. This Jesus hath God raised up. Would you not say that that's the fulfillment of he would raise up Christ? So he's done that part. 
Wouldn't you agree? Now, it's, he raises him up to sit on his throne. Here's where Edward would say, yeah, that part he hasn't done yet. He's only raised him up and he put him on his father's throne. As if So anyway. So therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, he has shed forth this, which you now see and hear. What does that mean? Well, David's not ascended into the heavens, yet he says himself, Jehovah said unto my Lord Jesus, sit you, sit thou in my right hand until I make thy fools thy footstool. That's the, that right there is a prophecy of the Lord sitting on David's throne. There's not two different prophecies like this. There's not one where it's like, sit on my right hand until I do this. And then also, I'll, later on, I'll give you a throne. They're the same thing. The throne of David has been redefined. Is God allowed to redefine things if he wants to, Edward? Is God allowed to say, well, the temple used to be a building, and now it's the church people itself. A lamb or a bull or a goat used to be what you used for uh, sacrifices. Now I'm going to use my son, who's a lamb. Well, he's not actually a lamb. God's redefining it. God says, Jerusalem is no longer where I bear my name. It's the holy, it's the, it's the Jerusalem above, the new Jerusalem. I could go on. There's like 50 of these things. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, assuredly, he's telling Jews, number one, I want Jews to understand this, God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. He's not only your Messiah, he's also your Lord. And how could he be your Lord and not be sitting on his throne? Just think about it. 